Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. I am Adesua Omoruan. And I'm Rafai Usaini. Now, before the introduction of formal education and Western civilization, one of the most effective ways of entertaining, communicating, as well as inculcating morals in Nigerian children was by telling them stories. However, uh, there's a decline in the cultural heritage, especially in contemporary Nigeria, where other means of entertaining, educating, and communicating morals and virtues to children now exist. Well, Dr. Tunji Shotimere, a theatre arts lecturer at the University of Lagos, and widely known for his musical outfits called Korenke, uh, joins us now on the art of storytelling in contemporary Nigeria. All right, so but before we start, uh, we'd we'll like to listen to his monologue tribute uh, to Nobel laureate Professor Wallace Nka during his 85th birthday celebration. Whenever I completely stops writing, uh, composing, let's put it this way, we decide in the end, oh, I've written something similar, others have and probably done it better. But um, I don't think that one day, uh, maybe just one week or three days actually go by without one composing something. Um, not everything gets put down paper. Um, well, it's just so much of the human tumult, round one. Um, you never stop writing. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, I've said it in a stronger, even much stronger than that. Um, uh, there are moments when I feel that um, there are enough, what you might call, organic problems in human society. Uh, the human individual, uh, issues of uh, psychological makeup, um, issues, concrete issues like uh, feeding millions, etc. Um, in of nature disasters, which numbers, then we overcome them. Um, just enough problems without religion adding to them. Um, but the others, there's nothing much you can do about it. But the religion at least can be controlled, can be placed on the check. Um, unfortunately, it just become a giant obstacle and instrument of oppression. Um, I've seen places where religion actually destroys the mind. Uh, I mean, everyone has seen it. Though they may not put it down to religion, uh, they might put it down to uh, social alienation, uh, psychological warp. But then again, how did human psychology get warped in the first place? Um, it's that kind of mentality that uh, animates the murderous extremists which we encounter today. Uh, the Boko Haramis, uh, the al Shabaab. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, Mr. Tundi Shetamari joins us now in the studio. Oh, that was almost exact, almost perfect. You Thank do you. adore Professor Wale Shoinka, don't you? Uh, if I, what, sorry? You adore him. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> genius. Uh, this, this is a man from whom we tap a lot of inspiration. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was quite interesting. Yeah. It's just that you didn't have the reedy voice, you know, like... <laughs> you, you, have to, you, you have to tone it down. You, 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 you don't want to do more than the, the doer himself. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. let's talk about storytelling mm. and contemporary Nigeria. Once upon a time, yeah. there was Tales by Moonlight. That's right. And there was Storyland by the story master teller himself, yeah. Uncle Jimmy Sholange. Yes. Uh, some people would say, and some people do argue, now, when you look at society of today, bankrupt of morals, um, it is as a result of the lack of stories that teaches morals like we had in those days. Mm. Do you agree? Um, yes, I do agree, but there's something that I just need to observe uh, along that line of thought, which is the fact that people, even with the uh, storytelling uh, tradition, if we were to, in fact, introduce that to this modern day generation of uh, the young people, uh, they, there's so much distraction. It doesn't interest them in any way. I mean, it's not as if people don't tell stories. All kinds of distractions have infiltrated our society that they don't want to look the way of storytelling. If you like, flood the entire nation African continent with storytelling ideas. 
They are going the other way. They're going the uh, the the, uh, the new what do you call it technology, the video video centric age, because they have alternatives. So I think that um, the way to sort of well have some kind of uh, hmm, solution to that is to build into their areas of interests the storytelling, the traditional way, and make it more appealing to them. I mean, I have children. I try to tell them stories. I, you know, uh, I actually, they see me exhibit the attitudes and the moral principles that are inherent in the traditional storytelling, uh, you know, uh, concept. So that helps. Mm. But again, they are still distracted. They get bored easily. So if you bring storytelling to them, you can only try. You can only compel them to do it because they want to pass their exams. They want to win some prizes. Beyond that, because we, there was no, there wasn't any prize attached to it. You know, you were just doing it because it, it, that was the only thing. There were no alternatives. So that's a big issue here. Mm. Uh, I, I want to ask a question in the lines of even preserving our stories. Uh, we all see how the foreigners have preserved their stories. You know, take for instance the story of the Norman invasion in the 10 hundreds. You have the Bayou Tapestry. Mm -hmm. See Lion King, for yeah, instance. That's right. Yeah. 20 years after, still a story of morals, mm. but see the way they preserved it and retold the story. Absolutely. Then it was cartoon, mm. but now it was high definition, you know, animation. Absolutely. And it was a very good work. Yeah. Are we thinking of making our stories more attractive to the young people? Because they're saying our stories are not attractive, so they're That's not right. interested. That's right. That's the point I just made. And I, I, in agreeing with you, I, I think that. Uh, uh, Producers, organizers of programs and activities that will engage children, teachers in secondary schools, primary schools, even post-primary schools, um, should build into the system, the curriculum, uh, some kind of methods that will make it much easier for them to um, get so pleased, if you like, uh, that will help them to you know, understand seamlessly the moral principle, because why do we tell the stories? It's to let them know more about their history, their environment, their culture, okay, how to behave, because there are other things that are planned in the school, you know, uh, curriculum to say, okay, fine, you need to greet your elders, you need to uh, be respectful, you need to help your parents, and all, and all of that is in our, is in our, you know, um, system, as, an, as African people, we don't even need to compel people, because you see your parents, you see your, uh, you know, elders in your society behaving in that manner. But, but then again, there, there is a big issue here. Um, I, I'm not going to name names, but look at the way that, you know, the politicians behave, even the people that we regard and place in high positions. Uh, they don't look people stealing money people are amassing so much wealth so if you tell these stories and they cannot relate it to what you tell them it's a huge you know you know disconnect so when you tell stories to children you want to behave in that manner accordingly to reflect the values inherent in that story so they will be able to say oh uh, I try as much as possible to let my students, my children, know that what I tell them is how I behave, and that's what I do. I, I mean, I'm a human being, but I try as much as possible not to veer away from those moral principles that I have, you know, implanted in them. Mm. Oh, yeah, I did mention Storyland and Tales by Moonlight because you know, those that were born in the 80s right. then understood that these stories were promoting plural, plural, plurality yeah. and um, shaming evil deeds, stealing, mm -hmm. corruption. Yeah. We have talked about how the stories have become perhaps boring, and mm -hmm. we're not telling them rightly. But let's talk about the instrumentality, mm -hmm. because 
Jimmy Sholanke on TV was a constant. You yeah. would not want to miss that. Let's talk about the people telling the stories. Do we have professionals, those who are capable of telling the stories rightly? Or is there a vacuum there? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to say that people don't want to look that way. I have taken that, you know, kind of, uh, I've taken an interest in storytelling because of my, the kind of profound training that I've had. And I've also tapped from people like, you know, Uncle Jimmy Sholanke, you know, uh, Professor Oshowinka, you know, Professor Femi Oshowinka, and these are storytellers. They go to the roots of it and share with you their, you know, ideas. Okay. But then again, young people, uh, presenters, storytellers who have it in them don't want to go in that direction to them. It's too indigenous. It's too rooted in our culture. They want to do modern things. That's the problem that we have. I am particularly interested in something that is cultural, that it will reflect my community, my society. It's, it's an issue of, are you interested in it? And again, you have reality shows on television who are not looking that direction at all. If they don't know, that, that's a problem. OK, fine. Um, if people can place some kind of reward you know, on it, perhaps we can get you know, more people to get more interested. I mean, I've been telling stories, you know, to, but again, we find it very hard to get uh, corporate sponsorship uh, individuals, so we have been doing it based on the deep interests that we have. That's how one has been able to sustain it. Is but, it the problem of uh, being lucrative? Uh, I mean, you say young people are not yeah. engaging in it. Is yeah. it lucrative? Why would that want to go to storytelling? <laughs> you say, if, if, well, it, it, everything has got to do with how you package and present it. It should be lucrative. You know, um, there are people who there are agencies, organizations who promote indigenous drinks, OK? But then again, it's a traditional thing anyway. Uh, but it's just that it's not popular. Anything that's not popular, people don't want to go there. But I can guarantee you that people will still come back to it. Because when they go round, 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 uh, Instagram, Facebook, and stuff like that, you know, they will still come back home. I'm telling you. I don't want to be deceived by what I see on Instagram. And that's the problem. Because most people would say, look, that's where the world is going now. It's not a problem. We can even use that medium, which is good. We can use the platform to promote storytelling. Yes, uh, we posted and put on you know, the, the social media the kind of stories that we tell. Yeah, people are responding. They are reacting to it. But then again, they don't see it as a core value uh, benefit to to their children, to, to themselves, or to their society. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 I've been gathering a lot from the conversation. Yeah. And I just want to ask, is, is that really the case, or we don't believe enough in our stories? And I'll give you instances. Mm -hmm. We have a very perfect story here, the story of Shongo and Oya. Yeah, that's right. Amazing love story that could go around the world. And equally, you have a story that is very mythical in nature, mm -hmm. like Zeus, the Greek, you know, the classics and things like that. Mm. But the stories are generally accepted. Absolutely. So why isn't the story of uh, Shongo, Oya, Obatala, why are they not in public domain abroad? I mean, if people like Beyonce mm. could appreciate the Orisha arts, mm. then why are we not push? Is it that we, the practitioners, don't push it out enough? Because when you say acceptability, I mean, mm. Chinua Chiba was accepted all over the world. Oh, yes. oh, Chima yes. Manda Ngozi DJ has been mm. accepted, mm -hmm. not because she's writing about Madame Toppington in the mm -hmm. UK, mm -hmm. but she's writing about all of Nigeria. Something that's uniquely, you Unique. know. So is yeah. it that we are not, as a practitioner, we're not pushing enough? Um, it's not even the practitioner. The we'll, practitioners, we'll, okay. We'll go on a quick break okay. and we'll get your response okay. on that. Okay. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the Morning Show here on Arise News. And we still have with us in the studio, Mr. Tunji Shutamiri. Thank you for staying with us. Yeah, let's go. So you were saying to me, okay, fine. Um, the, it, we, we're not promoting what we have enough. Yeah. We're not doing enough to promote them. Yeah. Uh, because uh, people who don't come from this cultural environment, are actually, okay, the Western world, mm -hmm. uh, they, they seem to be pushing their own narratives. Mm -hmm. 
we are working so hard as professionals, as practitioners. We, in fact, there is an eco uh, festival or carnival, theater carnival that is ongoing. Freedom Park, Ovalinde Bus Stop, you know, and it's all over, University of Lagos. Right now, there's a festival. And all of these things that we have uh, highlighted here today, they're going on, they're integrated into the festival. The point is that people, I really don't know, the people, the groups who have money, individuals, don't, it, there's something about, but, but, but I, I want to prophesy um, that they will come back to it if there is no money. You can only... Should I say amen to that? <laughs> <laughs> amen! No, they, they'll come back. No, seriously. Because, you see, that's one thing that... Uh, when people have explored all areas that they find interesting to themselves, and then they would say, okay, fine, what next? What is next for us? They'll come back to it. And then that's when we can then, you know, grab them to say, look, if you don't put that money on this, we're not going to give you. All right, so you talked about uh, Fum Cheton, you talked about uh, the Moremi, you talked about all the, you know, uh, uh, me, Shogo, the mythical stories and stuff. And it's all over. Check every ethnic group in Nigeria, in Africa. They have one story, one story or the other to tell. And it's just that people are just not looking. It is, look, when you have an orientation, right, you want to key in and project and promote the values inherent in that kind of orientation. They don't have it. They, they don't have it. If you don't have it, then what are you going to give? That's the thing. So we're working so hard to say, look, this is something that you will benefit from. This is something that will help us to, to enhance our political system, uh, our traditional cultures, the social, cultural values, in America, because these stories are there. Wale Shoinka, professor, is just, you know, sort of uh, building on the indigenous culture of his people. He won the Nobel Prize for Literature because he told the story of his indigenous people. Okay, the Oba, Oba uh, uh, you know, when a king dies, you know, Oba the, the king's husband yeah. must die with him. That's ro deeply rooted in the Oyo culture. Death of the, death of the king's yeah, husband. these young people don't know it. I'm telling you, okay, Femi Oshovinson, who is a, is a master storyteller and is so much interested in the folk tradition of his people, you know, the Arigidi and the Nightmen and the Moron Todum of this world, you know, uh, you know and uh, uh, no more the Wasted Britain. These are stories that will reflect our environment. But then, it's just that they won't, but like you said, I think producers also should find a way to make it light, not too heavy. Because if you make it too heavy, because it's not only in Nigeria, people have watched some place in Europe where even the younger people, you know, they, you know Shakespeare, if you come with all those big lines, render all the, oh, yes, my name is Shakespeare, this and you begin to talk and talk and talk and talk, they get bored easily. Mm. So we have to, you know, sort of begin to. Uh, well, you gave examples bring it. of stories that are half steam. So, take for instance. Yeah. It's so easy when we talk Shakespeare today. We still read Shakespeare. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. don't know that Shakespeare died in 16 something. Mm. He's over 400 years old. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still read Canterbury Tale by Geoffrey Saucer. That's right. That was written in the 1200s. Absolutely. Close to a thousand years yeah, old. Yeah. Where, yeah. When are our stories going to have that same power? You've talked about money. Mm. How can we put money into our storytelling? Who are the people to bring the mm. money out? Mm. Well, who are the people? Who are the people? The people are out there. They are the ones promoting the uh, reality shows you know, on TV. And they pump a lot of money. And then you want to look. I, 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 I don't know. The ones who are putting money on these reality shows, they know what they want, but me, I don't know what's in there. They know what they want. And it's the same thing that applies to, you know, uh, uh, what, what art is suffering is similar to what other sports, because emphasis is on football, because it's highly international, is commercially, you know, viable. It spins money very easily, okay? And they don't, they forget that art has the kind of 
qualities okay, and potential to spend money. But again, they are not. I think they, it's just that they are ignorant. So sponsors, it, it is kind of platform for us to begin to educate and let them know that this is something that you need to explore because if it is money you want, okay, you get the money. If it's publicity or what do you call it, uh, to reach out to a wider audience, advertising content and stuff like that, you can get it. All right? So um, we can only do our best. We, Some of us have... Um, we have signed on to it forever. That will continue to do it. I don't care. Sometimes people will say, ah, you wear this, your cap. This is it, look, it, I don't, I'm not trying to impress anybody. It's in my system. It's in my DNA. Without that cap, there's a huge disconnect oh. between myself, okay, and my conscience. And that's it, right? Yeah. So if people can see that way, people t seem to want to tilt Okay, in the direction w where, you know, they see, the, you know, other people, they, in fact, as a matter of fact, they don't have a sense of direction. Mm. That's the bottom line. Mm. Yeah. Well, you, you've talked about the role of the uh, practitioners and the producers. You say you're doing enough, you're doing well, mm. and you have put the blame at funding and lack of direction yeah. by those who... And have, ignorance, uh, and ignorance. And, and ignorance. Yeah. You've also prophesied that yeah. we will get back there. We will get back there. I'm telling you. He just <laughs> mentioned, just, you know, Lion King yes. and stuff like that. They've gone round and round and round. They get back to all their, all their traditional they, stories. They were deliberate efforts. Yeah. And I'm wondering where that deliberate effort is coming from and yeah. what role the government is playing in all of this. Is there a role for government in this? That's, that's another point that you... That's a very important point that you have raised. Though. Who are the people that are, you know, positioned, appointed to direct the minds of people who are supposed to make things happen for culture. I think we are just looking at culture from the theoretical uh, aspect. We, 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 you know, people who understand, who appreciate, who have practiced, who know culture, tourism, in and out, should be there to engage the people that will make things happen, right? It's not about, it's not theoretical, right? It is something that is, you know, rooted in understanding and conscientization, okay, and mobilization of people who can make, if you tell me today, these stories that we're talking about, who are the people that you want to get to make? I know who and who to go and talk to. But then again, you have to belong to party A or party B to get appointed. At the end of the day, there are some appointments that you, that, that, that you, that you get that become disappointment. Hmm. It's a serious issue. L let's talk about uh, how you merge being in the arts and being in the academia. Uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, we had Professor Shalafu Sudo oh, okay. right here on our set. Uh, mm. Both of you are in the same uh, the field, yeah. field, and even okay. probably the same department. No, no, no. Uh, Professor Fosudo is in the Lagos State uh, University. Uh, I'm in the University of Lagos. University, University of Lagos. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. So, uh, truth to be told, how how is it? How is it like merging both? Yeah, I would say that. Uh, to God be, be the glory, what I do is uh, part of what I teach. And I have not gotten out of the business or the practice of art. Mm. If I were to be doing bunkering or farming, uh -huh, what we say is a distraction. No, all my life I have been within the arts. So it makes it seamless for me. When I go out there to Freedom Park to watch a show, if I go to Muson to uh, to any of these, you know, uh, you know, venues where shows are happening, whether within or outside Nigeria, it's about arts and culture. So when I get back to the classroom, I'm sharing my, you know, uh, exposure and experiences with my students. So, so it's it's the same. Thing. So there's no there's no uh, uh, delineation between the, the the two experiences of town oh. and gown. They you know integrate, you know. Fantastic. So they interface. So mm. as one that is within, 
the industry and in the academia. Yeah. Uh, let me just ask you about the film industry in Nigeria, Nollywood, because um, more often than not, the students you turn out from a department like yours mm. uh, would most likely end up there. Absolutely, yeah. When you look at the quality of storytelling, production, mm -hmm. and even talent, mm -hmm. is this a true reflection of what is in the classroom, what has been thought in the classroom? Are you proud? Mm. You, you're saying the, the, what I see them in turn out the in the industry. Is it a reflection um, of what they are being taught? Is it a standard of education we're having in the arts? I would say that what we see out there mm -hmm. is a reflection of the interest of whoever is putting down the money. Because it's about the monetary value. Mm. Uh, that, that's what you see out there. It's not what uh, where people are trained to be versatile, to do things professionally mm -hmm. in the classrooms, within the theater environment, and the uh, departments. Mm. But when they get out there, the world becomes very strange to them. Mm. But again, and that, what, what we're trying to tell them look, if you want to survive, You'd better look at both you know, areas and adapt. It's unfortunate that those who actually dictate okay, the tune are there. Some of them, some, some don't have the right orientation. However, we have people who know. So, so what we do is to expose the students to the town and garden experiences. Mm. Do they, they don't know where to fit in. Don't forget, my department is not only in the theater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have visual arts. Mm -hmm. We have music. So we are massive. The University of Lagos, the University of First Choice, and the nation pri nation's pride. OK. Great. Well, like thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like to thank you so much for your time. <laughs>